everyone. This is Ken Klippenstein with the Intercept Breaking Points Edition. I'm joined today by my co-writer, Dan Bogusla. Um, we've got an important story for you today uh, that both of us worked on concerning Silicon Valley Bank in an angle that I think has gotten uh, far too little attention, which is uh, the national security component to all of this. Um, behind the scenes, during the bank run, as the federal government was debating um, what the you know size, scope, and nature of the intervention to protect depositors um, would look like, there was quietly a case being made in the halls of the uh, Pentagon for that um, the fact that Silicon Valley Bank had uh, depositors from the uh, tech world that could be said to be of national security significance. They were making a case for that they had to intervene to protect the national security of the United States. And again, this is a case that was taking place very quietly. There was um, one report in it afterwards in Defense One, but far too little discussion of how they were trying to um, orchestrate this kind of intervention, and in addition to that, uh, what, what basis that that would have taken, what aegis that would have taken place under, and how it might how it might be pursued in the future, because the um, Treasury's intervention ended up making it so that the DoD did not have to intervene, but it turns out they had tools uh, to do so if they wanted to. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Dan. Thanks for having me, Ken. Um, so Dan's contribution to the story was going to Congress and bird dogging the um, chair of the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee, Mark Warner who um, right after the uh, bank run on SVB uh, released a letter saying that um, the bank run posed a national security threat. And at about the same time, that's when the Pentagon's Office of Strategic Capital, a newly created office under the Biden administration in December that um, gives them uh, you know, money, resources, and authority uh, to try to um, protect um, parts of the finance sector that they deem um, critical to national security. It's at that same time that Warner's letter comes out that the Pentagon um, starts pushing this case. And so when I contacted them for comment, they didn't respond. I sent requests for comment like three times. So Dan just physically went to the Hill and chased him down and asked him, you know, what is the national security basis uh, of your of your claim that there's a that there's a national security threat um, by this by this bank run? What did he, what did he tell you? Well. Uh when he came out, I, I think maybe it was um, trying to revoke the uh, War Powers Authority um, that that were used for the invasion of Iraq. I think that was the vote that he was coming out of. Uh, I could be wrong about that. However, when he came out, uh, he was greeted by a scrum of very excited reporters. Uh, he was smiling. They were smiling. Yeah, can you talk about that dynamic a bit? Because when you were describing it to me, it's very different than what people think of the you know, the press would like to think of itself as adversarial, but it yeah. sounds like that's not what's going on. No, in the this, th this was towards the end of the vote. There weren't that many uh, um, senators, you know, coming in and out. He said, wow, it seems like everyone here loves me. It seems like everyone's so excited to see me. A and, you know, he was kind of joking because everyone was waiting around. You know, he was one of the last people they wanted to get their questions in. But there was also an element of that that was completely true. Um, you know, you're sort of standing there. I've been chasing him all day trying to get comment. Um, you know, the the... Uh, large network uh, reporters are there. You know, they're they're chopping it up. They're having a great time. They're asking. So it's a pretty warm dynamic. Warm so. dynamic. You know, ask it. You know, uh, senator. You know, any any updates on um, you know the FBI hearings? You know, it's and it's this. Was um, anyone asking about the bank runs? Because this was like the big story that I, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything in that scrum. I know people. Uh, you know. Obviously, when when the SVB news dropped, people were you know hounding people, especially on the uh, revocation of certain aspects of the Dodd Frank legislation that was uh, you know repealed by a coalition of Republicans and Democrats, um, some of whom, like Warner, participated in the original drafting of Dodd Frank legislation uh, to try to increase banking regulation. Then later joined with the Republican allies to to scale those back. Can you talk a bit more about that? Uh, uh, Warner's specific role in what happened, not just in terms of his rolling back the Dodd-Frank regulations that, you know, economists said could have prevented the SVB bank run from happening, but his own equities uh, within banks and his own experience in the financial world. Yeah, so I, I believe at one point Warner was was the wealthiest uh, member of the Senate. He, he was hovering, I think, between, I think, 400 million um, and you know he's always had a cozy relationship with banks. While he was one of the one of the drafters of the original Dodd Frank legislation, he also championed this rollback, which eliminated uh, certain um, uh, uh, liqu liquidity limits, certain stress testing um, required for these mid-sized banks, which SVB came in just under the wire to be protected, basically by this re regulatory scaleback. Um, and uh, you know, when, when I pressed Warner on this, you know, basically what he said to me was, you tell me what regulation we could possibly come up with that could 
um, have prevented a bank run on 25 cents to the dollar, you know, a quarter of, 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 of assets being withdrawn overnight. Um, and then he, he proceeded to, to say that, you know, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask tough questions about deep fakes and the fact that this was a you deep know, in, internet driven run. You know, the, uh, you know, deep fakes. You know, him basically. What does to, that have to do with SVB? Well, he's trying to put forward the idea that that you know, because a piece of this run was catalyzed by uh, private equity, you know, executives right. basically, uh, or sorry, uh, VC executives, you know, texting each other back and forth about the liquidity problems at the bank. That some and. and some of that occurred on Twitter and, and was online that, you know, you could have this threat of, um, of digitally induced bank runs, right? Like a panic driven by some fake video. Right. But there's no evidence that that happened. In no, there's, case, right? there's absolutely no evidence that so happened. So he just in threw fact, that out. In fact, that's the symptom of an underlying disease, which was a regulatory failure, um, which was a scale back that he voted for um, and he helped champion, uh, and also a, a, a total lack of... Um, uh, uh, of, of of internal oversight on the decisions that were made. You know, uh, I think this week, I believe, an uh, article came out, I think it was in um, the Post, about how uh, SVB changed their internal risk assessments. You know, they- So they had a sense that something like this might- <laughs> they, they, they absolutely had a sense that this could happen. They absolutely knew that the rate hikes could could bury them. Federal Reserve rate hikes. Yeah, and they, 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 tweaked, they tweaked their books. Yeah, I find his comments uh, astonishing. Can we get element two up there just to show people what the- what the quotes are from, from uh, Senate Intelligence Chair Mark Warner. He says, after an unprecedented and reckless run on Silicon Valley Bank, there were very real risks of instability spreading to other institutions and undermining our national security and technology innovation system. And so that's what prompted us, me first, to contact his press secretary, who they say you're supposed to go through, which she didn't respond to like three or four emails. And so um, Dan had to go to the Hill and, and you know, just chase him down and physically ask him. So when he asked him, the, uh, Senator Warner says, when our financial system is under assault, that is a national security issue. And then he goes on to say, um, if you see adversaries potentially being able to use, and I'm not suggesting this, I'm going to ask this question, but I've been worried about deep fakes in the system for a while. And that's pretty much the extent of um, what Senator Warner had to say to try to substantiate. But, but let's be clear about the false equivalency that he's drawing here, right? This was not a foreign... Uh, uh, hostile nation uh, trying to take down the U.S. financial system. This was uh, a a group of wealthy <laughs> depositors um, joining joining forces with extremely wealthy bank managers to sabotage themselves uh, in the name of profit. I mean, you look at some of the investors and uh, some of the depositors in SVB, like Roku, which had de deposited hundreds of millions of dollars into a, into a, a single bank. You know, on the sum of the the, the size of the GDP of of some developing nations. Um, and why did they do this? Because there was a relationship between. Uh, managers and tech CEOs, and uh, that relationship was cultivated through uh, white glove concierge treatment, um, uh, low interest loans, all sorts of things to create a sense that this bank somehow represented the uh, incredible creative output of Silicon Valley. And uh, at the same time, they were they were. Um, altering their risk assessment tools and protocols uh, to, to try to profit as much as they could from those hyper-risky deposits. Yeah, the potential conflicts here are just staggering. When I looked at um, Senator Warner, he's also the chair of the um, banking committee yeah, as well. And, 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 and let's, let's be clear about something. There is, um, I, I think there is some legitimacy to the idea that a, a collapse of the U.S. financial system could be a national security issue. Now, is the solution to that problem creating a uh, a, a a a a cash bag within the within the Pentagon to throw at tech companies that are irresponsible with their deposits and the banks holding those yeah. deposits, or is it to use your power as a U.S. senator and representative of the American people to try to create regulations that prevent both 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 actors on both sides of this issue from conducting their behavior to maximize their profits at at the uh, risk of disrupting the entire system. So, you know, he was very quick to try to frame this as um, a, a, a warning sign for potential threats from foreign actors and therefore a national security uh, uh, issue without taking any responsibility for his own domestic policy decisions. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the um, Pentagon point because it's a, it's a good place to um, uh, segue over to the DOD office that I mentioned before, the Office of uh, Strategic Capital, which was established very recently in December, uh, unprecedented in its um, unique 
authorities, and I you know, interviewed two former uh, very high-level DOD officials who were kind of shocked at all this and said, um, you know, I was really surprised by what took place because there's not really a history of, of you know, the DOD having a direct role in this. They have something called the Defense Innovation Board, but that was just an advisory council. It didn't have the same power that the Office of Strategic Capital does. And going forward, you know, if we're going to learn anything from this, because this was something that affected that bank and then the bank in New York, but, um, you know, if the catalyst for this stuff is these... Uh, uh, Federal Reserve uh, rate hikes that are going on and still ongoing and that, you know, top Federal Reserve officials say that, um, you know, we have no intention of stopping. We need to have a plan for, you know, what could happen um, subsequently. I mean, I don't see no reason to think that this couldn't happen again. And it seems like the pieces are falling into place just bureaucratically within the DOD to be able to make this new case in addition to the, um, you know, c case about the stability of the uh, uh, economic system uh, for, for, for ordinary people, generally, now they're going to say, oh, this is going to be a, you know, um, coup for the Chinese if we don't right. intervene. And, and I, I want to bring up something that um, uh, Senator Howley uh, said to me um, when, when right at the start of the uh, SVB collapse, when I was trying to talk to senators who had voted for the scale back um, of Dodd-Frank regulations. And, and he said to me that, you know, if this had happened, uh, if, if a small community bank in Missouri had collapsed, um, you know, uh, uh, national politicians would have said, you know, that's capitalism. That's the free market. Uh, they didn't pull themselves up by their bootstraps and so be it. And when it's a giant bank connected to, uh, you know, powerful interests, like as you reported, uh, California governor, Gavin Newsom, um, yeah, then, had, then, then all of a sudden it becomes systemic risk. Right. Then all of a sudden it's, we, we have to bail that out. And I think there, there's a similar point to be made here with uh, the Department of Defense, which is that, you know, in a sense, this is, um, th th this is one more step in, in the ludicrous sums that are divvied out to defense contractors uh, without any competition to these monopolistic firms that have consolidated, taken over all production and consulting for the Department of Defense. And they're creating an office, basically, to continue that, uh, what, is, what is in one sense socialism uh, for the rich, what is in one sense um, creating a government-funded program to ensure the continued production of um, you know, technology, high tech, w weapons firms, um, uh, and, and basically saying, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna try to get to the root of the problem here. We're not gonna create regulations. We're gonna set up a system to, to not just bail banks out, but bail out the companies yeah. that are affected. Right. It's, it's funny. When I first started working on this story, I, I go to somebody. Uh, sometimes when you have a certain inclination in a story, I like to go to somebody who has the opposite view to try to check and, and, and challenge what your assumptions are. So I went to a, a friend of mine who's a national security hawk who works in the intelligence community and is specifically tasked with and has been specifically tasked to, to, to monitor and track and stop um, foreign penetration and foreign interference, foreign influence in Silicon Valley. And I asked him, I said, it, just completely neutral, I said, is there a national security threat from the bank runs on SVB? And he said what you just said. He said, nope, this is an excuse for the rich to pad their pockets. This is socialism for the rich and, 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 and you know, harsh capitalism for everybody else. And it was like, this guy is not a dove on these questions. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's... You know, it's one of those things. It's a new office. It's 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 a strange new orientation. Um, it follows a, a familiar pattern um, of, of of funneling cash to to giant contractors and, and, and giant firms. Um, but I think, you know, it's these subtleties that get left out. Again, go back to the Hill. You know, people are, are chasing the story of the day. They're, they're, not, they're, they're not interested. Their bosses, their managers, their outlets are not interested in, um, you know, chasing these things that, that get slipped in on the slide. These slight things that, like, the, affects the entire country. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I, there's, there's a good anecdote, again, going back to the um, SVB reporting right when it happened, where, you know, I, I really hammered these, these senators on, uh, you know, this, this vote rolling back um, these regulations. And they said, you know, well, it's unclear whether the stress testing um, would have done anything. And, and there's a measure of truth to that insofar as, you know, even the Fed's stress testing measures are, are, are imperfect and those should be changed. Sure. But the idea that, um, uh, that this was adequate uh, regulation, this scale back created adequate regulation is a complete farce. Now, when I, when I went and, and um, you know, bird dogged all of these Democrats who had joined with Republicans to, to pass this bill that Trump signed, um, you know, they, it, it, it was incredible to me how upset they were, how upset they were, you know, um, uh, uh, one senator from Delaware, you know, I tried to speak with him three times. He, he 
tried to brush me off three times. They really didn't want they, this they particular They did not want question. to talk about this. Yeah. And in fact, when I when I pressed Angus King and we ran the story about you know his vote, uh, I saw him. Um, I saw I saw another reporter been standing right next to me when when I was pressing him on it. And I saw him the next day after the piece came out, go up to him and uh, try to talk to him. And, and King was like, "I'm not answering any questions, <laughs> especially not from you." And you know that really showed though that you know if if you press. If you press a little bit too hard with these senators, then um, you know they're, they're you gonna, lose access, and that's why people don't ask. You lose access, yeah. and that's why there's especially speeches. someone like it's, Senator Warner. Uh, you know, to give folks at home a, a sense of the Washington media game. You know, you have a chair of a committee. That guy's going to give you exclusives. That guy's going to give you access to things before um, investigations come out, before press releases come out, that kind of thing. So it can really cost you yep. to to cross them. But that's that's where we come in. Happy to cross these. Yeah, I'm, I'm always shocked by the decorum. You know, I'm always shocked by the decorum on the Hill. You know, it's like the, you, they have they answer to uh, the press. They answer to uh, the people who voted to put them in office. Um, and I'm always shocked by kind of how timid and reserved. Uh, you know, the 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 the. Interior, what should right. be interrogations on, right. on the Hill are, um, because you know they're, they're they they are there to answer your questions, and they can't right. really you know they and can't again, really say no. Looking at this story to see how, how little coverage there's been, this is not a marginal issue. No. Again, this is systemic. This is a question of systemic risk, and um, you know how we prevent something like this going. I mean, this was a huge. I guarantee you, ask any. I mean. It's very hard for me to believe that looking at something like Silicon Valley Bank, that's not something that's going to draw broad condemnation from people of both sides of the political aisle. Yeah, um, I mean, I think both sides tried to, to, you know, angle, uh, you know, both, both, both on the right and the left for uh, a narrative that suited their purposes, except for, um, you know, those Democrats who, who. You know, voted for these rollbacks, and they just were doing everything in their power to say, "We yeah, have the, to wait and see, wait for the news cycle to blow over." The rhetoric I saw it was so frustrating. It's this from the Democrats. It was this is not a bailout. We're protecting depositors. All these euphemisms, and then from the Republicans, it's like this is a bailout. And then absent from the from the um, political leadership uh, discourse is, "What are we going to do to prevent this from happening again? Yeah. How are we going to bring back Dodd Frank? What are the conditions that we're going to put on these banks in exchange for, um, frankly, saving their ass?" Uh, to make it so that this doesn't happen again. Almost no discussion of any of that. And, and go back to what Warner said to me. Warner said, uh, you tell me what regulations could possibly have prevented this wild, meme-driven, online uh, catastrophe. And, Other than the and, one and, you and voted and against, it's, yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's it's unbelievable to, to make that argument. It's, yeah. it's, it's not based in reality. It's not based in truthfulness. Um, and it's, it's obscene. Well, we really appreciate your uh, descending into the... Uh, uh, Mordor to ask these guys these questions. So uh, thanks for joining us and for your hard work in the story. And thanks everyone for watching this. I hope you got something out of it. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.